Ants on Saccharides by Sandhya Parpukaran. In the middle of the ocean stood a cluster of islands. The tiniest was the island of Saccharides, the length and breadth of which was ruled by King and Queen Carbonia. But what Saccharides lacked in sides, it made up for in sweetness. The island grew a bounty of sugarcane. In factories, the sugarcane was transformed into tons of sugar. The Saccharine people were wondrous bakers. They sold their cakes and biscuits to the neighbouring islands, but they never sold so much as a single grain of sugar. That way, they protected their sugar monopoly, ensuring themselves the richest of treasuries. Many a spy were sent to steal a stalk of sugar cane, but the cane fields of Carbonia were guarded more fiercely than pirates' treasure. King and Queen Carbonia encouraged the island's residents to experiment with their baking. They held baking competitions and travelled all over Saccharides to judge the exquisite baked goods. Princess Sweetie, their only child, accompanied her royal parents everywhere. She always had her nose in a book, only emerging at tasting time. Since there were so many sweet things, people munched as they talked, they munched on the way to work and in hammocks on the beach. Needless to say, the palace, along with every house, courtyard, laneway and street on Saccharides, was littered with crumbs. Then one day, the ants took over. There had always been ants in Saccharides. People fended them off with lines of cornstarch across windowsills and doors. But one day, the ants jumped over the cornstarch. That changed everything. Ants crawled everywhere, working in teams to carry away every sweet morsel they could find. They crawled over pets. They crawled up walls. They trampled the bed linen, raided picnics and infiltrated school lunches. Help us, O oh king and queen, the people cried. The king proclaimed, Sprinkle more cornstarch. The queen said, At least the palace is still safe. The palace was protected by a sparkling moat, but it only took a few weeks of balancing on leaf boats for the ants to cross that channel and stream through the palace interiors. Princess Sweetie was aghast when the ants marched all over her books. Nevertheless, she continued to read fanning them off as required. Then the ants discovered the king's delicious moustache, peppered with powdered sugar. When the queen leaned over for a smooch, the ants crawled over her too. That was too much for King Carbonia. The king summoned his court. The scholars put their heads together. Fetch exterminator Spratoni, they cried. Sprotoni, a hefty man, sailed in from the biggest island in the cluster. He heaved a spray gun filled with chemicals. Once I've exterminated the ants, I demand 100 bags of sugar and half a dozen sugarcane saplings. The king resisted. He whispered to the queen, We have kept our sugar monopoly for centuries. We can't give away our trade secrets. That would be treason. Please just agree, said Queen Carbonia. There will be no kingdom to treason if the ants keep going. But the king needn't have worried. Spratoni's spray had no effect on the ants. They seemed to have gained resistance. Maybe from years of wallowing in cornstarch. No one knew for sure. Spratoni sailed home in shame. The people of Saccharides pulled out their hair in despair. There was not one inch of the kingdom that wasn't covered in ants, except for the trees. The ants disliked the trees and took their loot into underground mounds. So the next Saccharides council was held in the tree tops. Scholars, cried the king, put your heads together. Rid us of this menacing threat. There is an animal, said one scholar, balancing precariously between two branches. It is called the ant bear. Its snout is long, tongue is curvy, 
and sticky and pining for ants. Now the king was not an animal person and wouldn't even com contemplate a fluffy cat in the palace. So he was about to banish the scholar who suggested the ant bear, which sounded far worse than a cat. But Queen Carbonia cut in. Bring the ant bears, she cried. The ant bear trainers held their wiggly animals and before they let them loose, they bargained for 200 bags of sugar and a dozen sugarcane saplings. The king was ready to blow. How dare they ask for Saccharides' precious commodity? A steely glare from Queen Carbonia settled him down. Agreed, she shouted. Now rid our kingdom of this tremendous plague. The ant bears entered every nook and cranny of Saccharides, but the ants slid free of their sticky snouts. Possibly it was the cornstarch again. Whatever it was, the ants were impossible to capture. They continued swarming as the ant bears and trainers boarded their ship, defeated by the tiniest of foes. While King Carbonia was secretly pleased to be rid of the ant bears, his kingdom was drowning in ants. The scholars bumped their heads to find another solution, but they found nothing more to suggest. That's when Princess Sweetie pulled her nose out of her book and scrambled onto the tree. The Pied Piper can help us. Long, long ago, the Pied Piper rid a whole kingdom of rats, she said. She had her parents' attention, but the scholars weren't about to be outsmarted with a girl by a girl with a storybook. That's just a preposterous tale. How does one call such a person, if indeed they exist? Well, said Princess Sweetie, when you face defeat, don't give up. Believe that a solution, the real solution, will be revealed in the most amazing way. Gobbledygook, cried the scholars. This child is babbling nonsense from her storybook. The king and queen saw Sweetie's serene, glowing face, and they knew she was right. They both calmed down and embraced their daughter. Then, lo and behold, there stood the Pied Piper in their midst. She had short, jet-black hair that clung to her head in tight curls. Her orange and yellow patchwork tunic looked like it was made from sunshine. Her flute sparkled like a jewel. I can rid you of this insect plague. I ask for 500 bags of sugar and two dozen sugarcane saplings in return. Ha! ridiculed the scholars. What can you do with a flute when the exterminator and ant bears have failed? The Pied Piper was not one to waste precious words on arguments. She lifted the flute to her lips and a melody flowed forth. It was as beautiful as a field of flowers swaying in the soft breeze. All the people in Saccharides thought so. Princess Sweetie and her royal parents thought so. The ants thought so too. Every single ant dropped their sugary cargo and followed the mellifluous music. The royals and commoners followed to see the spectacle. They traversed through towns and over the hills until they came to a field. The piper changed her song to a shrill tune. As fast as rapidly flowing stream, the earth opened a small tunnel that seemed to go on forever and ever. The ants disappeared into the soil. The earth closed. People stared, mesmerized. Suddenly, they realized the land, their homes, their kingdom was free. Hurrah, they all cheered. They gathered round the sprightly saviour. They invited her back to town for a feast and celebrations. But the Pied Piper asked for her reward so she could be on her way. That is when the king began to squirm. Uh, now, well, I never really promised. The queen elbowed him, but it was too late. The Pied Piper knew history was repeating. She remembered well the stories she had heard of her great-great-grandfather and his time in Hamlin. 
So she lifted her flute to her lips once again. She played a deep melody, beautiful but sad, like the weeping wind on barren land, and the strangest thing happened. Every grain of sugar from kitchens, shops and factories across the land came flying in response. Saccharides' precious treasure tumbled into the choppy sea, dissolving and disappearing forever. Ah, ah, cried the king. No, cried the queen. The song wasn't over. It raged, frantic and piercing. People covered their ears. They were stunned at what happened next. All the sugarcane plants across acres and acres of land plucked themselves out of the earth and dived into the sea. Stop! No! Take anything you want! Their cries were deafened by the crashing waves. The Pied Piper had disappeared along with the sugarcane plants, never to be seen again. The Saccharine people grieved over their lost treasure for months. King and Queen Carbonia wore black and wailed, lamenting upon their wretched fate. Until one day, Princess Sweetie pulled her nose out of a book once again. She found a bee and followed it to a beehive. And soon enough, Saccharides got baking again. The end.